Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be reviewing the electrocardiogram. Electrical currents are produced at the body's surface as the cardiac muscle action potential moves through the heart. We're able to visualize these currents through a graph called an electrocardiogram. It's abbreviated as either ECG or EKG, after the German word electrocardiogram, where cardio is spelled with a K. The electrocardiograph is the device that records the electrocardiogram by amplifying the electrical signals. The ECG is a visual summary of what happens electrically during each heartbeat, expressing the results in millivolts over time which is usually shown in seconds. It's a recording of all of the action potentials generated by all of the cardiac muscle fibers during each cardiac cycle. The electrocardiograph uses different groups of electrodes adhered to the body surface to record the ECG. Two sets called limb leads are attached to the arms and legs. And there are six leads located at different areas of the chest, called the chest leads. The ECG is able to detect changes in the heart's activity compared to normal levels, including problems in the heart's conduction system, changes in heart size, such as enlargement, damage to the heart, and can help explain reasons for chest pain. There are three distinct waves in a typical lead to ECG associated with each heartbeat. They are the P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave. Each wave represents a depolarization event which stimulates contraction or a repolarization event which stimulates relaxation. The P wave is the first small raised bump on the ECG. It signifies atrial depolarization as the action potential propagates through both the right and left atrium from the sinoatrial node or pacemaker. At the end of the P wave Both atria have depolarized, triggering atrial contraction. The second wave is the QRS complex, which starts as a downward movement, that's Q, then rises sharply, that's R, and finishes as a downward wave, that's S. It represents rapid ventricular depolarization, where the action potential is moving through both right and left ventricles. At the end of the QRS complex, both ventricles have contracted. The third wave is a longer, flatter wave called the T wave. It represents the slower ventricular repolarization that is taking place as the ventricles begin to relax. The flat areas of the ECG represent the plateau phase of the action potential. This is where the depolarized state is maintained. Reading an ECG is both an art and a science, but to the skilled observer it has much to tell about the overall health of the heart. The ECG has tremendous diagnostic value in that the wave size can give us information about cardiac problems. For example, a P wave that is larger or more elevated than normal may be the result of an enlarged atrium. A larger Q wave, the first part of the QRS complex, may be due to a mitocardial infarction a heart attack. An elevated R wave signifies ventricle enlargement. If the T wave is flatter 
or more depressed than usual, the heart probably is not getting enough oxygen due to problems in the coronary circulation. The length of time between waves is called an interval or segment. Time intervals longer or shorter than normal may indicate an abnormality. The PQ interval is the length of time from the start of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. It represents the time from the start of atrial excitation to the start of ventricular excitation, essentially how long it takes for the action potential to move through both atria, the AV node, and the rest of the conduction system. A longer PQ interval may indicate a blockage in the conduction system, perhaps from scar tissue due to coronary artery disease or infection, that is delaying the movement of the action potential. The ST segment starts at the end of the S wave and ends at the start of the T wave. It's usually one-tenth of a second in length. It indicates the length of time of ventricular depolarization occurring during the plateau phase of the action potential. It will be longer than normal during myocardial infarction and shorter than normal if the heart is not getting enough oxygen. The QT interval begins at the start of the QRS complex and runs through the entire T wave, lasting about four-tenths of a second. It is recording the timing of ventricular activity, the time from the start of ventricular depolarization to the end of ventricular repolarization. It will be longer in situations involving conduction problems, myocardial damage, or decreased blood flow to the heart, called myocardial ischemia. Sometimes heart conduction or blood flow problems take place very quickly or in an unpredictable manner, and these cannot be detected on a typical ECG. In these cases, continuous ambulatory electrocardiography is used for measurement. The patient wears an independent, battery-powered Holter monitor for a 24-hour period that is constantly recording an ECG and storing the data for later analysis.